RC circuit example using simplification by Thevenin equivalent. Uh, I will first read uh, each block from my notes and then explain. Also, if you rerun the lab video, <coughs> that will help you get a better feel for this. It's only about three minutes long, so you might want to run that first. When we analysed our RC circuit from the lab with a source input voltage, VI, we ended up with the total response equation here. Now we could take even more complicated circuits and write down equally more complex differential equations and then attempt to solve them. Thankfully most of the time we will never have to do that as most circuit modules are designed to easily be reduced down to our basic RC circuit. So that equation one, this one, is all we need. Circuit designers do this to make circuits easier to build and test. Their main goal is always to make easier modular components to work with. So what I'm saying is that uh, what you'll find is that most circuits will be built in such a way that you'll be able to reduce them down to a simple RC circuit and then just use this, if you need to use this equation, you can use this total response equation here. And there, there are even simpler ways when we uh, disregard the, uh, the actual rise time and fall time of a capacitor, we can actually make go for an even simpler uh, analysis which we'll talk about later. So this is where the Thevenin theorem comes in very handy as we often will use it to ensure our system of components can be reduced down to the form of an RC circuit as we just said so that we can test out voltages and currents through the capacitor we want to analyze by just using this equation. We don't want to have to deal with some complicated differential equation, so we would always try and reduce circuits down to the simplest RC circuit. So, example problem, just to give you an idea how this works. So, this here could be an extremely complex circuit. We're, we've probably, let's say we've managed to get it down to these two resistors here so far. So, at this stage, we can, uh, uh, we can go through this example problem and I'll explain. So... We're going to say that for this example, so we'll, we'll let R1 equal R2, and we'll say that they're both equal to 3 kilo ohms. We'll let the capacitance be equal to 4,700 microfarads. Which is, these are the same sort of values I used in the lab, just so that this can tie up nicely with the lab. We want to find the voltage across the capacitor, uh, which we'll call VCT. We will assume that there is no initial voltage across the capacitor, so the initial voltage is zero. So when we switch on, there's actually no voltage across there to begin with, which is, the, which is probably the usual way when you just switch on a circuit. So we have the following information. We've got R1 equals R2, 3 kilo ohms. The capacitor equals 4,700 microfarads. To make this ana analysis easier, we convert this circuit into the simplest RC circuit that we can. In other words, what we want to do is get it in this form. It's, it's there than an equivalent. So we want to get it into this form. So we've got a single voltage, a single uh, in series resistor, and our capacitor. So that's the simple RC circuit that we want to get it into. So let's now reduce it. So step one, to reduce this equation, remove the capacitor. So we're going to remove the capacitor like so. So we end up with this, this uh, um, description. Now we can find uh, the Thevenin voltage, VTH, by using a simple voltage divider between the two resistors. And when we plug the numbers in, we'll find that that is equal to 0.5 of the input voltage. So we now we've got the Thevenin voltage. Step two, short the source supply, the VI. We're going to short that uh, supply voltage and look into the port AB. So we're going to look into where I've labelled it AB here. We're going to look into that. Uh, and then we'll calculate the parallel resistance that we see. So we look into this port, and that's you can imagine that's down to earth now. You're looking into a parallel uh, circuit here. So we can just uh, calculate the Thevenin resistance by treating that as a parallel circuit. So you've got R1 R times R2, usual equation, over R1 at R2, and that becomes 9 over 6, which is 1.5 kilo ohms. Uh, yeah, I haven't put the kilo ohms in there. That's 1.5 kilo ohms. So now we've got a simplified, so now we've got the VTH and the RTH, we've got a simplified RC circuit uh, here. So we've got the RTH, the VTH and the capacitor. So 
we can now just use our total response equation. So now we can use this equation. Remember that the, the initial voltage is naught in this in this case. And if you plug in all the values, we end up with uh, VCT equals 0.5, the input voltage, brackets 1 minus E to the minus TRC. This is the familiar equation that we've uh, gone through before, where the RC constant, RC, equals 7.05 seconds. Notice how the time constant, the RC time constant within the exponential term here, is independent of the value of the input voltage. So 5RC, so if we multiply 5 times RC, will take 35.25 seconds to charge the capacitor, whether we use 10 volts or 30 volts or 300 volts. So uh, for, for the input voltage. Yeah, now if you try out a few VI values and plot out the curves, you'll get curves something like the following. So uh, as an example, I've just put the example here, VI equals 30 volts and VI equals 10 volts. So you can see that they both take, they both reduce uh, within 1% of the actual final values, both at exactly the same time, yeah? It's just that you can see the 30 volts, it's just that the voltage is is changing much faster here in the early stages than the, uh, the the small voltage. That sort of makes sense because if you've got a higher voltage, obviously the current, the charges are flowing much quicker for the higher voltage. Obviously this one gets there because it's only got to reach 5 volts, whereas this one gets to 15 volts at the same time because the, the current is much greater. So that's why they both reach at the same time. So that's it really. The next lecture we will again be using the two components, the resistor and the capacitor, but this time we will show how by using the right sizes we can make what's called a differentiator.